What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to build simple word clouds with python now for those of you who don't know what word clouds are this is what a word cloud could look like so you have basically a certain shape a certain structure uh given by a certain mask so in this case the python logo and then we have text and from this text we extract words and the larger the word the bigger the word is displayed in the word cloud the more important it is so for example here we can see python has a very high importance programming has high importance and other words like version offer or working have less importance and this is what we're going to learn how to build today in python so let us get right into it now in order to create word clouds in python we're going to use an external library called word cloud and for that we need to install it via pip so via the command line and for that we open up cmd on windows or the terminal on linux and mac and we type pip install word cloud now on windows i'm not even sure if it is supported on mac or on linux so you have to find out on your own but on windows you might encounter the problem that you don't have Microsoft Visual C++14 installed. So if you press enter, you execute this command and then you get an error, it was not able, it was not possible to finish the installation. So we have a problem. And the problem is that you're not having Microsoft Visual C++14 installed. Uh, what you're going to see is that there's also a link that guides you on how to install it. So you basically follow the link, you download the Visual Studio installer, and you install the respective C++ packages. It shouldn't be too difficult. Just keep in mind that you cannot use Word Cloud if you don't have this installed. So once you have that, you can go ahead and start importing. So we're going to import from Word Cloud, import Word Cloud like that. And for this tutorial, by the way, we're going to also use a couple of additional libraries, not necessarily for the Word Cloud itself, but for some uh, image loading, for some masks, for some displaying of the Word Cloud and so on. So additional libraries that we're going to need are NumPy, so pip install NumPy matplotlib and pillow. I think that's it. So these three libraries are going to be needed in addition to Word Cloud if you want to display the Word Cloud, if you want to use certain images as a mask for the word cloud and if you want to uh, load images in general right so we're going to also import numpy as np we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and we're going to import pill.image this is pillow so let's start with a very very simple example here i'm just going to create a string that i'm going to call text and then i'm going to say this is hello world and now I'm going to create a word cloud by saying WC equals word cloud constructor here dot generate and then text. And then all I'm going to do is PLT im show word cloud here and PLT dot grid um, off or actually not grid, sorry, axis off and then PLT dot show. So this is the most simple word cloud that you can create this is what it looks like. So essentially, we have the text Hello World, we take the two most important words out of there, or all the most important words out of there, which are two, and then we display them in the word cloud. Um, now, you can work with what uh, with whatever text you want. So you just create a text file, you can copy paste from Wikipedia from any source, you can write your own text. For this video, I have prepared three texts, one completely random text, this one here that was generated by a website. Um, another one is Python text copied from Wikipedia. So I basically just went to Wikipedia and copied a bunch of Python uh, information from there and one about computers in general. We're going to work with these three texts here. So first of all, let's get started by saying text equals open. And then I'm going to open my random text.txt. Again, you can use whatever you want. You can also copy from Wikipedia. You can generate your text, uh, whatever. And then I'm going to open this in reading mode. I'm going to call the read function. Now, if I run this, uh, you can see that we have way more text here. And the larger a word is in the image, in the word cloud, the more important it is, the more frequently it occurs in the text, usually. Um, so that is the idea. Now we can change this to Python text from Wikipedia that I talked about. And then we're going to see different words. So we can see here, Python is a very large term, programming, language, philosophy, use seems to be quite often um, used here. So code, better, design, better usually comes from statements like uh, simple is better than complex or readable is better than 
not not readable, whatever uh, is written in the text there. Um, but you're going to notice when you load text that you oftentimes have words that you don't want to have in there. So filler words or stop words, as we used to call them here. Um, and if you want to block them out, what you can do is you can define here in the word cloud constructor, you can say stop words equals and then you basically pass a list of words that you don't want to include in the word cloud. So you can, for example, say I think this should work here. I haven't tried it. But if you type Python, uh, for some reason, I think there you go, you can see that Python is not part of um, of the of the word cloud. But you can also see that I excluded now the default um, stop words like and to a in the is it so we now see them here. So I overrode basically the default. But what I can do is I can import here from word cloud the stop words in capital letters um, value so I can replace Python here by just stop words and then it it excludes automatically the stop uh, the stop words. So for example, I can go ahead here and say print stop words like that. And we can see what kind of words these are. So I can end this here and you can see wouldn't own not therefore otherwise uh, shand would they you and so on and so forth. So we have a couple of words here that we want to exclude. And you can also add some more words to that. So you can extend this collection if you want to. Um, now, this is the most simple way to use a word cloud. Now you can also use an image as a mask here. So for example, I have prepared two images here, the Python logo, and the computer.jpg file, just a random image that I found online. Um, the important thing here is that you define the background color. In this case, we have the Python logo on white background. It is important because the background has to be white. If it's like mixed, it doesn't work, you need to have something that works a little bit like a green screen, in this case, a white screen that says, okay, everything that's white is not part of the word cloud, everything else is part of the word cloud. And then we can use the colors also to influence the colors uh, of the word cloud itself. So we're going to work with a couple of parameters here, we're going to start by saying, first of all, let's load the image, we're going to say that the Python underscore mask is NP array. So we're going to take a NumPy array from the image. So pill dot image dot open. Um, and we're going to load the Python logo dot PNG. Now for some reason, it underlines that because underlines that because it doesn't match the expected type. So maybe that's not the best practice way to load the image. But it does work. So if you want to use an alternative way, you can do so. In this case, I'm going to do it just like that. And here now I can say mask equals and then Python mask. And then I can say that the background color is equal to white in this case. And this alone should already be enough to show uh, the Python logo here. So you can see now not with the colors and without any border. But this is now a word cloud in the Python logo form. So in the, with, with the Python logo mask. Um, this already looks quite interesting, I think. So this looks pretty good, in my opinion we can now go ahead and add some additional information. So we can say here that the contour, uh, I hope that's how you pronounce it color is for example, black, and we can say that that the width is three, for example, and then we can do something like a minimum font size, a min font size is uh, what did I choose here three as well. And then we can also define something like the max words, essentially, we don't want to use more than 100 words so that we don't have endlessly many words here. So for example, this is what this would look like. Now we have a black border here. Uh, we have less words, as you can see, which doesn't look too good. So let's increase that maybe to 400. I'm not even sure if we have 400 words in there. But now it looks better, I think. So this is what you can do. And uh, now let's go ahead and do this for the computer that, so that you see that it doesn't work so smoothly for all the images. So let's change this here to computer. Uh, let's change this here to computer dot JPEG. Now I'm still gonna leave the name Python mask because we're going to change this in a second uh, back. Uh, we're going to, to go back to the Python example in a second here. Um, but now I think this was not too smooth. So now you can see this works essentially, but you see that we have some more uh, problems here. And this is just because the image is not so suited for that. Um, just an example. So I want to show you that. Now, 
the most important thing or the coolest thing in my opinion is to have the colors matching. So I'm going to turn this back now to Python logo and to Python text.txt. I think it's quite interesting to have the Python logo with the colors with the Python keywords in that color at the respective areas. So how do we do that? First of all, we import another, uh, I think it's a class and this is the image color generator. And what we do now is we say, image or let's call this color map is equal to image color generator from Python mask. And um, basically, we create the word cloud. And before we actually use it, what we do is we say WC dot recolor. So before we display it, we recolor it based on a color function. This color function is our color map that we created. And by doing that, we essentially do what I showed you in the preview, we have here the blue and the yellow of the Python logo. And this looks quite interesting, in my opinion. Now, let me show you how we can also filter out some words, for example, maybe what we don't like, let's pick something that doesn't look too awesome. So for example, support now support might be related to Python, but maybe we don't like the word. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and say stop words plus I hope it works like that. Uh, support if it doesn't work like that. Uh, okay, we don't have Oh, for set and list. How do I combine? Maybe I can do it like that list. And then Oh, boy, this is a very bad way to do things. But I hope it works. There you go. So now the word support is gone. Um, this is how you could do it probably not the best way to to just do it like that. Maybe you should do that outside of the uh, outside of the constructor of word cloud. But this is how you can exclude words. And I think this is all in all a pretty nice thing to have some visualizations. This is like an additional thing that you can add to data science, especially if you work in natural language processing environments where you have a lot of text and you maybe want to focus on the most important words. Uh, this is a quite interesting library and a quite comprehensive library. I think there are way more options and classes to import here. This was a very basic introduction. Just wanted to show you that. So again, the steps are you install Visual uh, Microsoft Visual C++ 14, you install Word Cloud, you use these libraries as well for the uh, image mask, basically, and then you can just create a Word Cloud from text. This is quite interesting, I think. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.